The NBA season starts in three days, and today we are counting down and ranking every Sega Genesis basketball game. What's going on everyone? I am Jay, the channel Square Pegs. Glad to be back with you after a two-week vacation. And hey, I know I've been promising this for a while, but stay tuned to the end of the video for our thousand subscriber giveaway. I will give you directions on what you need to do. There's some pretty good prizes in there. Let's head over to the Genesis and get to ranking these games. All right, up first we have Arch Rivals. Now, Arch Rivals is a pretty interesting game because this is kind of like prototype NBA Jam. It was the same two-on-two -two gameplay that we grew to love in NBA Jam and College Slam and NBA Jam Tournament Edition, but there's just something missing here. I don't know if it's the fact that the sprites aren't terribly big, so you kind of look like you're playing an NES game, or the interruptions every time you make a basket or anything like that with the little cutscenes that play. It gets to be just kind of tedious. It's not nearly as fun. Now, there's definitely some good bones here. You can tell what led to NBA Jam and NBA Jam Tournament Edition, but I don't know. To me, this one just doesn't quite land. Arch Rivals is a fine game. It's okay. It gets a C. Next, we have Charles Barkley Shut Up and Jam featuring the most ripped you will ever see Sir Charles become. He is absolutely just cut on this character select screen, and I, I, okay, so there was some artistic license taken with Charles' appearance in this character select screen. Now, there are a lot of things that I really enjoy about Shut Up and Jam. Again, this is kind of another two-on-two -two game, kind of like NBA Jam, but it takes things a little bit differently and actually plays a little bit closer to what actual basketball is while kind of ignoring fouls and things like that. The gameplay in this game is pretty quick. It's not bad. It's a little loose, which is where I think a lot of the things kind of fall apart for this game, where if the gameplay had been tightened up a little bit and maintained the speed that it currently has, I think it would have been a lot more solid. Now, I don't think you can overlook the absolutely fantastic funk soundtrack on this game. It actually kind of sounds like Doe Jam and Earl, which is pretty cool. So that brings it up a little bit for me. I want to say that this game is a C, and I think that's kind of where it ends up. I was toying with the idea of putting it at a B, but I think a C is where it deserves to be. So Charles Barkley Shut Up and Jam gets a C. And next up we have Charles Barkley Shut Up and Jam 2, and this one is not as good as the previous entry. I actually like the original better than I like this one. And the primary reason being is, where the hell is Charles Barkley as a playable character? You're going to have him as the title character, as the name of the game, and not allow him to be selectable? Now, I won't lie to you, I don't know if he becomes unlockable somewhere down the road. I didn't play the game long enough to find out. There could be a cheat code to unlock him, I don't know. But going through character select to play my game, there was no Sir Charles. That is not exactly what I want to hear, and it becomes especially weird when you start playing the game and block shots happen, or good shots happen, or you have a turnover, something like that, and it's Charles saying, my bad, or face, or good shot, Rook. It's a little weird that he's giving you compliments and he's not in the game. It's, it's a disconnect. The gameplay isn't as solid as the first one. It doesn't play quite as well. It's a little too loose. Like, they could have tightened it up more in the first one to make it a better game, and they decided to loosen it up more, I think because they saw how popular NBA Jam was, but what they had was a really good two-on-two -two basketball game, and they just lost it. They were so close to being an actual excellent two-on-two -two basketball game that they went in the other direction, and the gameplay kind of falls apart. Charles Barkley Shut Up and Jam 2, not as good as the original. This one gets a D. I used to rent Bulls vs. Blazers in the NBA playoffs constantly, so first off, let's give it up for this classic EA Sports intro. I used to love this one when all the different sports would pop up and then it would switch over to what sport you were actually playing. I thought that was so cool. And I've got a lot of nostalgia for this game and I want to make sure that my love for this game from when I was a kid doesn't cloud my judgment here. So let's, let's talk about the basics of the game and what I like about it and what I dislike about it. You don't get to choose from every team in the NBA. You only get to choose the playoff teams and that's that's a bit annoying because it would have been nice to have every team in the league to be able to choose from. I do think that the character sprites look really good in the game. I think it actually is a fairly good looking game, if a bit simplistic, but they make use of what they have. Where where the game really falls apart, though, is, is the gameplay. I, I remember loving this as a kid, and I think it was because I personally hadn't played basketball at the time, so I didn't know enough about it, and I just kind of thought this is the pace basketball moved at, but... Even in the late 80s and early 90s, basketball was still a game of speed and a game of finesse, and this game moves like you're walking through pudding. 
it's a very slow game. The ball physics are a little bit weird, like bounce passes and bullet passes will just kind of float. I don't know. It just doesn't quite feel right. So Bulls versus Blazers in the NBA playoffs. It's a good effort from EA Sports for making a basketball game for the Sega Genesis, and it definitely helps cultivate the seed of what NBA Live would eventually become, but doesn't quite get there for me. Bulls versus Blazers in the NBA playoffs gets a C. All right, everything I said about Bulls versus Blazers holds true for Bulls versus Lakers. This is the sequel to Lakers versus Celtics, and it's a tried and true formula that got reused, and you actually kind of see where EA Sports kind of developed their methodology for iterative gameplay development and iterative software releases with things like NBA Live and NHL. That's kind of what happened. That was their MO, and that's how they worked. I mean, it's a fine game. You get, again, the playoff teams from that year. It's released in 1991, so this is the 90-91 season. And it's it's all right. It's, it's a fine game. Again, it's slow. It doesn't move at the pace that you would expect basketball to move at, and that knocks it down a few notches. It looks okay. Graphics are about the same as they were in Bulls vs. Blazers, so there wasn't a whole lot of updates there, but eh, it is what it is. Bulls vs. Lakers in the NBA playoffs gets a C. All right, here is a game that I have a lot of affection for, and that is Coach K College Basketball. This released in 1995, and this is right in the wheelhouse of when my adoration of college basketball started. My mom was a teacher at UMass at the time, so I loved the Minutemen, and props to EA Sports for including the good boys from Amherst in here. And being able to play at the Mullen Center is something that's awesome to me, and I love it. I really like this one. We have the isometric view. The gameplay pace is a little bit faster. The ball physics are still a little bit wonky. They were definitely still working on that at this point. So things like rebounds and passes are a little bit flighty and work a little bit differently than what you would expect them to do or hope they would in real life. But the gameplay itself is really fun. There's a ton of teams to choose from from the NCAA. Obviously, you don't get any player names because that's how things were at the time. But the game itself is really solid. It takes everything that worked in the later NBA Live games that released for the Genesis and just puts a college basketball coat of paint on it. And I can't help but love it. Coach K Basketball, for me, gets a B. Okay, first off, I had no idea that there was a college basketball version of NBA Jam and College Slam. All right, let's talk about how great this is. First of all, you get to choose from a bunch of schools in the NCAA, which is awesome. You get to choose your favorite school. In this case, I am playing as Boston College. And it's NBA Jam, just with NCAA logos. You can't really go wrong here. There are some graphical oddities in the game, like every player looks like they're in their 40s, which is a little funny to me. Like, this guy I'm controlling for Boston College clearly has a receding hairline and a thick mustache, and that's alright. I mean, maybe that was the style when this game released. The game is still a lot of fun. It controls really well. It's a hoot. I can't give this an S, but College Slam absolutely gets an A. Alright, I don't know if there was a thing in the 90s about putting a person's name on the cover and then not having them appear in the game, but Kind of like Barkley Shut Up and Jam 2, David Robinson's Supreme Court doesn't feature David Robinson. And to me, they kind of did the Admiral dirty there, guys, taking that out of the equation. You do get a splash screen with David on it, which is fine, although he doesn't have his majestic mustache. The gameplay itself is actually fairly competent. The mechanics of the game are pretty solid. It plays like a really good basketball game. I don't like the flipping when you cross court. I kind of dislike that. I wish it was just kind of a smooth transition as opposed to cutting and then switching the controls a little bit because you actually start moving in different directions when you cross midcourt, but that's all right. It is a little bit weird that you have to draft a team every time you play. I don't know if that's just the exhibition mode or what, but it's an interesting idea for a video game, and I actually think it's pretty well made. It's not great. There's very few teams to choose from. None of the players are actual NBA players or anything like that, which I don't want to hold against it, but it is a bit... It's, it's a very interesting game. Like, I don't know what to say other than it's a very interesting game. <laughs> it's fun to play, though. I will say that. I, I didn't expect anything from this game going into it. I expected this to be a pretty poor basketball game, and honestly, it's pretty fun. I, I'm going to give this one a B. I, I want to apologize for what's about to happen. Now it's time for Dick Vitale's Awesome Baby College Hoops! And never has the word awesome been more poorly used or just incorrectly applied to describe something because holy crap this game is bad. They tried to emulate Mode 7 graphics on the Genesis and you can imagine to what effect that happened because it looks awful. It plays terribly. It sounds hideous. It's it, it, it's 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 awful. 
it's it's truly terrible. It's an F. Straight up, I loved the original Double Dribble on the NES, and I had high hopes for this one, because this one's called Double Dribble, a Playoff Edition, and I thought, hey, I'm in for more great Double Dribble action, and what I got was... I don't know, like, everyone moves around like they're in a mosh pit, or they're dancing at a ska concert. Everyone's just swinging arms and jumping up and down and kicking their legs, and it it doesn't feel like basketball at all. I, I mean, it looks fine. And it actually animates really well, and the sound is pretty good, but this is not a basketball game. It doesn't play like a basketball game, in the slightest. I I can't give it an F, because, I mean, what it does, it's competent at, but... It's not basketball. It's like someone described basketball to somebody that was watching Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, and they created Double Dribble the Playoff Edition, so... In all seriousness, this isn't a great basketball game compared to the other games on this list other than Dick Vitale's awful baby college hoops. This one's pretty bad. This is a D. The concept behind Jordan vs. Bird one-on-one -on -one is solid. I think there is such a great idea here, but the execution on it is so bad that it's, it's almost comically awful. Like, the one-on-one -on -one gameplay is terrible. It's just not fun to play. It's just a terrible total package. It's it's just not good, and it's not fun to play in the slightest. It, it, it's, it's an F. Ah, the one that started it all for EA Sports with basketball, Lakers versus Celtics and the NBA playoffs. And again, I'm not going to let my nostalgia cloud this too much because I used to rent this one all the time. I grew up a Celtics fan. Larry Legend was on the cover. I was going to play it. And, I mean, it's it's fine. Just like Bulls vs. Blazers and Bulls vs. Lakers, it's a middle-of-the-road game at the end of the day. It's slow, it doesn't play quite well, ball physics are a little bit weird, and it's just the same as the other two. It's, again, a blueprint of iterative development. It's a C. Alright, halfway through the countdown, let's take a look and see where all of these games rank. NBA Action 94 gets points for trying something a little bit different. This feels like an extension of the old Sega Sports talk games that you, that were on the Genesis around launch time because you get Marv Albert talking about the game, which is, at the time, was a big deal. I mean, he was the voice of the NBA on NBC, and people recognized Marv Albert as the voice of the NBA, so it was neat to get his voice in here, but unfortunately, that's about where the quality stops. Gameplay-wise, it's a little bit slow. It's a little bit clunky. It is more basketball simulation than arcade basketball which i appreciate but i don't know it just doesn't quite get there the look is a little off it's a very muddy game the character sprites are very small when compared to other games on this list and it just doesn't look exceptional like it's not something i look at and i go yes this has its own identity because it's just very generic it's not a terrible game but it's not a good game i can't even say it's a middle of the road game i have to give nba action 94 a d I'll be honest with you, after the disappointment that was NBA Action 94, I had zero expectations for NBA Action 95 starring David Robinson. I didn't know what to expect, but what I can tell you I did not expect was a top-down, north-to-south basketball game. It was just bizarre to experience, especially after the isometric, kind of slow plotting movement of the previous game. This game is fast. It's fun. It's the first one we really experience on this list if we go alphabetically that captures the speed of the NBA game which I appreciate. Now, some of the characters look like they're members of the Fellowship of the Rings. They're very short, they're very tiny, they're a little Hobbit-esque. But I think that actually kind of plays to the charm of this game. I was really surprised by this one. The game looks a little silly, but it doesn't look bad. It plays really well, and it was a truly enjoyable experience to actually pick up this game and play it, especially after what I experienced with the 94 iteration of this game. I'm gonna give this one an A. NBA All-Star Challenge takes what should be an enjoyable experience by taking the different exhibition events of the NBA All-Star Weekend and making them some of the most boring, awful experiences you will ever have in a video game. This is terrible. The three-point shooting does not work. The free throw has a moving crosshair where you kind of got to figure where to shoot, even though where you think you should shoot doesn't make any sense because nothing will go in the uh -uh. hoop. This is an F. NBA Hangtime is just a continuation of the NBA Jam series. This is the third iteration of that franchise, and it's great. Like, it's fast, it's fun, it's over the top, it's ridiculous. It's everything you could possibly want an NBA Jam game to be 
without quite reaching the lofty heights set by NBA Jam Tournament Edition. I mean, it's a great game. Don't get me wrong. I would play NBA Hang Time if it was put in front of me, but I'm going to choose NBA Jam Tournament Edition over it every single time, and I think that's kind of telling for the franchise. Number three is still a great game. NBA Hang Time absolutely gets an A. There's a lot to love about the original NBA Jam. This was the one that brought me to the arcade for sports games. I love this game. It is one of my favorites. It is one of the games that I own complete in box. I wanted to have this. I love this game. But even with that, and I, I'm saying this so you guys understand how much I adore this game. With all of that said, this game is not an S. And I won't even say it's an A because I think there are things that hold it back from being a truly spectacular game. But what this game is, is arcade action almost at its finest, almost at perfection. It is a wonderful game and a truly enjoyable experience. It brought over-the-top arcade action to sports like never before. This is the game that brought us things like NHL hits and NBA Blitz. Without this game, we never would have had those. NBA Jam is a great game, not a perfect one. It's an improvement over Arch Rivals, and it doesn't quite get to where NBA Hang Time and NBA Jam Tournament Edition are, but it's still a fantastic game. NBA Jam gets a B. NBA Jam Tournament Edition is perfection. It took everything that Arch Rivals and the original NBA Jam did well, it improved it, it kept the consistent gameplay and the excellent over-the-top action, and just made it better. I, I can't really explain why I prefer this one over the original, other than the fact that I think it just plays better, it looks better, it sounds better, and it's faster. NBA Jam Tournament Edition, to me, is perfection. This one gets an S. NBA Live 95 does a lot of things very well. The animations are better, the game moves more quickly, the isometric look is fantastic for the series, and would become a staple for the 16-bit generation. There's definitely still some hangover from the NBA Versus games that EA Sports did, and I think the game suffers a little bit for it, but the improvements are noticeable. The gameplay is faster, it moves better. There's some questionable arcade stuff going on here, like out of bounds is kind of just a suggestion. It doesn't really matter. Guys will regularly run off the court and run back onto the court. There's no out of bounds with the ball. You can run behind the hoop. But the gameplay itself is pretty fun. I Because it doesn't really observe the rules of basketball, I can't give it an S or an A. But to me, this one's a B. It's a really fun game to play. I really like NBA Live 96. I think it does a lot of things really, really well. I don't care for the continuation of the arcade gameplay. I, I wish it was more simulation, and I think that knocks it down a few pegs for me, but that doesn't mean it's a bad game. Like, the graphics look good, the physics are fine, it plays like basketball, it just kind of ignores the rules, which I don't really like. It's a really fun game. If this was NBA Jam and it was ignoring the rules, not a problem. But in a simulation game, I want it to be a little more accurate to what the gameplay should be. Still a really good game, gets an A for me. NBA Live 97 featured our first appearance of a cover athlete. Everything before this had always been group shots, but this is really cool. We actually got Mitch Richmond as the cover athlete from the Sacramento Kings. And do you remember when the Sacramento Kings were like a force in the NBA back in the 90s and the early 2000s? Yeah, good times. That was fun, wasn't it? But now they suck, and that doesn't matter. But we're going to be talking about NBA Live 96 here, and I actually really like this one. I think there's a lot of improvements made here. There are definitely still some questionable arcade things going on. Like, I, I know a lot of people prefer that, but for me, when I'm playing a sim, I want it to be a sim. I want it to adhere to the rules. But the improvements are noticeable. Graphics are better. Animations are smoother. We're moving things a lot more quickly. It actually feels like it's playing up to the NBA pace now, and I really like this one. Not quite perfect because of the fact that it ignores those sim situations, but I'm going to give it an A. Finally, we have the total package from the NBA Live series, and that is NBA Live 98. And I think this one actually gets to perfection. I didn't experience any weird arcade stuff here. The actual rules of basketball seemed to be followed as I was playing, which I appreciated from a simulation game. The graphics are still excellent. The court models look great. The gameplay is fast and fun and actually feels like basketball. Feels like the NBA for the first perfect time in a simulation on the 16-bit console. I am giving NBA Live 98 an S. NBA Showdown 94, unfortunately, it kind of maintains the same kind of plotting and boring and slow gameplay of the NBA Versus series from previously on the Genesis. It's a fine game, but it is slow. I can't give this any higher than a B. 
it does what it does very well. It just doesn't do what it does well for me. So yeah, it gets a B. All right, so NCAA Final Four basketball is a hot mess of a video game. First off, graphically, it's just bizarre. When my friend Corey saw me playing it, he asked if I was playing an Atari 7800 game, and no, this is a 16-bit Genesis game. It's just, it's just really weird looking. It, it, I mean, it's neat. It looks cool. The animations are fluid as hell. It's just, it, it, it looks like it's something that's 35 years old. And gameplay-wise, I couldn't figure out what to do. I would get possession of the ball, and then I couldn't control my movement. I would just stand there and dribble out the clock and get a backcourt violation. I was never able to move. I was never able to shoot. I was never able to pass. So because of that, this game gets an F. All right, straight up, Team USA Basketball is going to get ranked higher for a really stupid reason. So first off, gameplay-wise, it is almost identical to the very slow NBA versus games that appeared earlier in the list. So those immediately, this starts out at a C. But what bumps this one up for me is the fact that you get country facts before you begin a game. Like, I learned so much about Canada and Croatia when I played this. <laughs> like, it's a silly reason to bump it up, but it's something I appreciate. I had a lot of fun playing this one. Team USA Basketball gets a B. Tecmo Super NBA Basketball was a surprise for me, and here's why. First off, the game is very fast and very fluid, and when I saw that it was going to be a east-to-west, side-to-side game, I expected it to be slow, kind of like what we got with the old NBA versus games from EA Sports, but this game moves at a rapid pace, it moves quickly, and it's fun to play. And I am just so excited to see the return of the classic double-dribble cutscenes when something big happens. I get a block, we play a block cutscene. I shoot a three, we get a three-point cutscene. It's really great. It's quick, it's stupid, it's simple, but it's fun and it doesn't play after every play like we got with Arch Rivals. This one's a really solid game and was really surprising to me. Tecmo Super NBA Basketball gets an A. There you have it everybody, my rankings for every Sega Genesis basketball game released on that console, let me know in the comments down below what you think of my rankings, if you agree, if you would disagree, if I am way on point or way off, I would love to know what you guys think. Also, let me know down below what sport you think I should take on next. I did this as a request of a viewer, and I had a lot of fun with this one. I played most of these games growing up, and I'm happy to say that most of them aged really well, or were pretty much exactly where I thought they would be. But what you guys are here for is the 1,000 subscriber giveaway. I need you to send an email to squarepegsyt plus giveaway at gmail.com and I need you to include in the subject thousand sub giveaway and the only thing I want in the body is 1000 sub giveaway anything more than that and you are disqualified I will pick one random winner in one week and you will be receiving the following a copy of Demon Souls for the PS5 sealed and in box a pink gorilla plush a pink gorilla sticker and the first ever Stay Square sticker made by my wife and the winner will get to pick out one shirt from our merch store and I'll get that shipped to you in the size you choose and the color you desire in the way you want it to look. Hey, if you're new here, please like, please subscribe down below. And if you dig the work I do, consider becoming a monthly Patreon sponsor like the fine folks you are seeing on screen right now. Appreciate each and every one of them. And if you really dig what I do, also consider checking out our merchandise. Links to both will be in the pinned comment down below. Until next time, folks, I have been Jay. So happy to be back with you making videos again. Until next time, remember to play more games, stay square, and take care. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>